Um, the sale of the Island Park office, that's another environmental analysis that we're working on right now. I talked to the team leader, uh, I think it was yesterday, and he said that he received the, the comments from the scoping um, that folks replied to, so saying you know, what their concerns were about selling the office. You can still offer comments if you'd like, but the longer that you take to give comments, um, the less we'll be able to use them, because they're in the process right now of analyzing the effects of selling that building. Um, the proposal for that building is to sell the building along with two-ish, two and a half acres, which would be like the parking lots. So basically just the footprint of that building um, is what we'd offer for sale. We hope that the environmental analysis will be done, oh, probably early spring. Uh, should be what happens. Then it takes our lands group in the regional office about six months, maybe nine months, to finish all the stuff they have to do. And then we'll either sell it outright um, for the appraised price, or we'll put it on the auction block, so to speak, and people bid on it um, on the internet. How did they decide which uh, buildings to shut down? How did they come to that? Um, we did several, the first service does analysis, so we did several analyses to help us figure that out. It's pretty much based on the number of buildings, the cost of maintaining them, and the long-term cost of maintaining them. And Island Park has at least twice, if not three times the amount of buildings that Ashton has. And because of the winter that we have here, they're a little bit more difficult and more expensive to maintain. They're all about the same vintage, in fact, Maybe Island Park buildings are a little bit uh, newer than some of Ashton's buildings. But I think the big part of it was, was the winter. Doing all the snow plowing, doing all the winter maintenance, um, that kind of stuff, and being able to save the long-term maintenance money in the long run. Um, when our offices combined, boy, 18-ish years ago, we never downsized our buildings to um, fit the number of employees that we had. And we, as always, have rules about how much space you're allowed to have per employee. I have a lot of space for not as many employees, so um, that's why we're getting rid of some of our buildings and uh, why this it, office was the one that was kind of picked to go. What's going to happen to the rest of the buildings out there? Um, the plan for the rest of the buildings, there are eight homes, a warehouse, um, three bunkhouses, and a few a sundry other buildings that we're using. Uh, the homes are going away. Uh, they will either be moved to another forest, because there's some other forests who are desperately in need of housing. And right now we have, I think it's an executive order that tells us we cannot build new buildings. So we're, probably, we're proposing to move some of those buildings to the forests who want them. If that's not the case, we will try to sell the buildings and have whoever purchased them move them. And there has been some interest in that from um, some nonprofit groups who are interested in those buildings. Um, the bunkhouses, I am going to move so I can house the 20 person fire crew in Ashton. The warehouse and a couple other buildings that are there are going to stay there and will continue to use them. Um, we're not real fond of pulling a lot of trailers up and down that Ashton Hill, so we're going to leave some of our equipment up here depending on the season, so we we'll ATVs, you know, the Bobcats, stuff like that to be able to be more efficient and not a little bit more safe, not pulling up and down the hill all the time. Yes? When you sell the uh, Forest Service buildings here, that is on Forest Service land, is it not? So if you sell it, you can sell it to private people? Yes, the um, office is an administrative site. And we have a law that was passed not too long ago, I don't remember exactly when, that allows the Forest Service to sell, outright sell, land that is designated as an administrative site. The administrative site here in Island Park is 60-ish acres. We are allowed by that law to sell 40 acres. And so the original proposal, just to let you all know, was to sell 40 acres. But we brought that down, narrowed that down to selling the office in two-ish, two and a half acres um, versus the 40. So, but yes, that is all National Forest System lands. And when we do sell it, it will become public, or private lands, excuse me, your people on a license. Yes? Are people going to have to go down to Ashton? Much is, this, is closing the office a done deal? Um, I'll answer the first question, that one's easier than <laughs> nothing but the second question. Um, in order to meet with someone, all the employees will eventually be in Ashton. 
Um, we will have one employee remaining here somewhere here in Island Park who will do what I call the frontliner position, give out maps and forest product permits and information and you know, be the interface. We'll have a phone there that she'll be, or that person, I can't say she, that that person will be able to connect to Ashton and connect you to someone that you want to talk to. But if you're going to meet with someone, you know, it's face-to-face, -face, it would be in Ashton, or we'd meet somewhere up here if prior arrangements have been made. Um, is it a done deal? Uh, pretty much, unless the environmental analysis is appealed or taken to court or there's a compelling reason. I am not the decision maker on that on that decision. Um, my boss, the forest supervisor is, and the regional forester, the regional lands director is. And so if someone has made a compelling argument or reason for leaving the office open, that is up to Grant Larson and the regional lands director to make that decision. We realized that our public service and our public presence was primarily the information we provide to the public maps and and product permits, um, and so we really wanted to continue to have at least a little bit of presence up here, so that folks, you know, especially because some people come and visit from the north, and they don't even go past the Ashton office, and so to be able to get them permits or maps or just general information about the forest would be a little bit, um, hopefully, more palatable to the community up here. And we know that people who are recreating and vacationing are not going to drive down the hill to get a map. And so we kind of want to be able to provide stuff so that people can comply with our regulations. So where would that person be stationed you would like to buy the firewood permit or something? Where would that person be stationed? I don't know yet. We're going to have to rent an office space somewhere for that person. Um, I've been talking to Tom Jewell, and that could be a, a possibility, you know, at the city building um, across the road. Um, but they are also limited on their space. Um, there's some other, probably other options that I haven't even researched yet. Um, we probably won't be in that mode for at least another year, if not two years. Yes, sir. How will it impact the, the fire service up here? How will it impact the fire service when the office up here goes away? Um, there are two fire engines up here that are staffed with three people each, and then I have a 20-person crew, uh, fire crew up here. That 20-person fire crew is, most, is gone most of the summer. They're usually doing um, fire someplace else. They're a regional resource, if not a national resource. Um, in high fire danger times, so, uh, well, before that, um, we would move the engines and the fire personnel to Ashton. But in high fire danger times, we probably station uh, fire those two fire engines back up here again. Um, you know, leave them at the warehouse and have folks uh, spend the night here or make sure that they're up here patrolling. Um, during the high fire danger season. We usually do that anyways, um, but you know it's just more efficient right now because there's two engines up here and two in, in Ashton, and so they kind of cover those areas versus you know the engines from Ashton coming up here. In high fire years, like this past year, um, all of my engines were usually gone except for one. Now, so most often when we're not as threatened by fire as other areas, the engines aren't even here anyways. Like this summer, most often three engines are gone at a time. 